Hello my dear children. Hope you all are safe. Today our lesson is the human reproductive system. The term form 3. Chapter 18 the human reproductive system. In this chapter we are going to learn about both male and female reproductive system including the menstrual cycle, fertilization and fetal development. Okay, let's go and see what are the things that we have to learn about in this lesson. Germates. What are germates? Germates are reproductive cells. Germates are reproductive cells. In humans, the male germates are known as sperm and the female reproductive cells are eggs. In the picture, you can see how the structure of a sperm and egg For humans to reproduce, a sperm cell and an egg cell will need to come together before a new life can be formed. Both sperm cell and an egg cell have some common features. Let's learn what are those special features. The sperm cell is the smallest cell in the body. The head of the sperm contains enzymes. These enzymes will help to break down the outer coating of the egg membrane. So my dear children, the sperm can enter the egg cell. The sperm cell contains half of the genetic information needed to form an offspring. All of the genetic information of the sperm cell can be found in the nucleus. That means the information can be transferred efficiently from the sperm to the egg during fusion. A sperm's tail helps it to swim fast towards an egg. The egg cell. The egg cell is the largest cell in the human body. Egg cell also contains half of the genetic information required to form an offspring. Like sperm cells, all the genetic information in the egg cell can be found in its nucleus. Okay children, what do you know about the male reproductive system? In the picture you can see the various parts of the male reproductive system. According to that picture, we can understand the reproductive system is closely associated with the urinary system in males. What are the main parts of the male reproductive system? Urinary bladder, seminal vesicle, sperm duct, prostate gland, testis and the urethra. Dear children, when you look at that picture, you can see there are two testes. So we call it testis. There is a urethra, sperm duct, prostate gland and it contains two seminal vesicles with a 
urinary bladder. Now you know what are the main parts of the male reproductive system. I told you each and every part of the male reproductive system they have different functions. Let's go and see what are the functions of these various parts. Okay dear children, let's learn what are the functions of each part in the male reproductive system. Urinary bladder. It contains urine before it released through the urethra. Prostate gland. The prostate gland and seminal vesicles release a fluid which in nutrition and enzymes to help sperm swim towards the egg. The mixture of sperm and this fluid is known as semen. During ejaculation, the prostate gland closes off the opening between the bladder to prevent semen from entering the bladder. Urethra It is a tube that leads to the outside of the penis and allows urine to be passed out. During sexual intercourse, semen is released from the urethra. Penis It is a body part found outside the male's body. It becomes hard and stiff during erection. It helps to deposit semen into the female reproductive organ during sexual intercourse. Testis It produces sperm cells and testosterone. It can be found in the scrotum. Sperm duct It is a muscular tube that carries sperms from the testes to the urethra. Okay, I hope all of you have learned about the functions of the various parts of the male reproductive system. Okay, let's learn what are the main parts of the female reproductive system. Look at the picture very carefully. What you can see in this picture? Yes, in the picture you can see there are two fallopian tubes, two ovaries, uterus, uterus blinning, cervix and the vagina. Those are the main parts of the female reproductive system. Each and every part of the female reproductive system are doing different functions. Let's go and see what are those functions. Fallopian tube. It is a muscular tube which connects the ovary to the uterus. Its walls contract and push the egg towards the uterus. The egg is fertilized in fallopian tube. Ovary Oestrogen and progesterone are produced in ovaries. Eggs are released from the ovary when they are matured. Uterus lining The inner layer of the uterus. The fertilized egg will develop further at this site. Cervix. The cervix consists of a ring of muscles at the lower end of the uterus. It becomes larger during birth so that the fetus can be delivered. Vagina. 
The vagina or birth canal is a muscular tube which joins the cervix to the outside of the body. The fetus exits the mother's body through this canal. Semen is deposited here during sexual intercourse. So, these are the functions of the male reproductive system. Menstruation cycle. What is menstruation? It is a period that the regular discharge of the blood and mucosal tissue leave through the vagina. When a female reaches puberty, the ovary will release a mature egg about once every 28 days. If the egg is unfertilized, menstruation occurs. The uterus tissues and egg are discharged from the body. Menstruation lasts about 5 days on average. Some females will have shorter or longer menstruation periods. Look at the picture very carefully. In this picture, you can see what are the changes that we can see during the menstruation cycle. According to the picture, you can see in the menstruation cycle, there are four phases. My dear children, in day 1 to day 5, the uterus tissues, egg and the blood are discharged through the vagina. We call it as the menstruation. Then, the day 6 to day 10, the uterine linen, which is rich in blood capillaries, start to thicken. We call it as the thickening of the uterine linen. Then, the day 11 to the day 18, the mature egg is released into the fallopian tube from the ovary. This process is known as the ovulation. The egg may be fertilized by a sperm during this period. So, the day 11 to day 18, we call that period as a fertilized period. The day 19 to day 28, the uterus is ready to support the growth and development of the fertilized egg. If the egg is unfertilized, the uterine linen and the egg will be shed in the next menstrual cycle. So, I hope you all can understand about the changes during the menstruation cycle. Fertilization. What is fertilization? It is the process that the nucleus of the sperm combines with the nucleus of the egg. What is fertilization? Yes, it is the process that the nucleus of the sperm combines with the nucleus of the egg. Before fertilization, sexual intercourse has to be occurred. During the fertilization, the genetic information from both the sperm and the egg are combined. Then it forms a fertilized egg. My dear children, when there is a fertilization, the diet and the drugs which can be effect for it. Let's go and see how do the diet and the drugs can affect the fertilization process. 
having a healthy and balanced diet ensures that your body gets sufficient nutrition to grow, repair and produce healthy cells. A poor or unhealthy diet can affect the quality of the egg cell in the ovary. The genetic material in the egg cells may change when you are taking an unhealthy diet. When it happens, the egg cells may not be able to function normally. So, when you are taking a poor diet, affects the quality and the quantity of the sperm cells produced in male. The sperm cells may not be able to swim fast enough to reach the egg. The number of sperm cells discharged by the male during the sexual intercourse may also decrease. In the fertilization process, when you are using the improper drugs will harm to the genetics information in both cells. Drugs such as cocaine, nicotine can affect either the quality or the quantity of the sperm cells produced. Tobacco or cigarettes contains nicotine. These drugs may also affect ovulations and the quantity of the eggs in the females. Fetal development. So what happens after the egg is successfully fertilized by a sperm cell? How does the fertilized egg develop into a fetus. Let's learn about that. What is an embryo, my dear children? The fertilized egg cell will start to divide and form a ball of cells known as an embryo. The embryo will move through the uterus and attach itself to the uterus lini. This process is known as implantation. What is implantation? The process that the embryo move through the uterus and attach itself to the uterus lini is called implantation. In this picture, you can see how the implantation process can occur in the ovary and the fallopian tubes. When the embryo will develop in the uterus to form a fetus. Here in this picture you can see the entire process for the complete fetal development and growth takes about 40 weeks. Okay my dear children, now we are coming to learn about another important thing, placenta and umbilical cord. After an embryo is implanted in a uterus, a placenta will develop from the embryo. The placenta contains blood capillaries and vessels to exchange of substances between the embryo and its mother. Nutrients and the oxygen can diffuse from the mother's blood to the embryo or fetus via the placenta. Waste products such as carbon dioxide also can diffuse from the blood of the embryo to its mother's blood. As the embryo grows, it separates from the placenta. A tube 
known as the umbilical cord, will connect the embryo or fetus to the placenta. The umbilical cord contains the blood vessels of the embryo or fetus. It can help to transport nutrients and oxygen from the placenta to the fetus. And also the umbilical cord can help to transport waste from the fetus to the placenta. Diet can affect fetal growth and development. Substances can diffuse easily from the mother's blood into the fetus blood. Let's find out what happens to the fetus if the mother's body does not take in enough of certain nutrition or take in harmful substances. My dear children, it is important that pregnant female pay close attention to their diet. Besides having a healthy and balanced diet, it is recommended that a pregnant female take dietary supplements such as vitamins and multivitamins to ensure her fetus receives all the nutrition it needs for proper growth. In the later stage of the pregnancy, the mother would also need to increase her calories intake to support the growth of the fetus. But some foods should be avoided as they may affect fetal growth and development. Let's see what are the food can affect the fetal growth and development. Seafood. Some seafood contains mercury which is toxic. It can affect the brain development of the fetus. Raw food such as raw salmon, soft boiled egg, medium rare steak can contain bacteria or viruses that are harmful to the fetus. Alcoholic drinks. Alcohol is a type of drug that can affect the fetus brain development and also it can cause the fetus facial features to be deformed. It can also cause the death of the embryo and fetus. Examples of alcoholic drinks are beer and wine. Caffeinated drinks such as tea and coffee are type of drugs. Consuming too much caffeine may affect the fetus. The improper use of drugs such as cocaine, nicotine can harm a fetus. They may even cause the death of the fetus. Nicotine is found in cigarettes and tobacco. Therefore, smoking cigarettes or tobacco during pregnancy is highly discouraged. Here my dear children, now we are coming to another important thing about this lesson. Sexually transmitted diseases. My dear children, some diseases are transmitted or passed on from one person to another during sexual intercourse. So these diseases are known as sexually transmitted diseases. They can affect the mother and the fetus. Some can be transmitted from the pregnant mother to the fetus during pregnancy. And some of the diseases can be transmitted to the baby during the birth. 
Here, there are two examples of sexually transmitted diseases. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is caused by a type of bacteria. It may cause the death of the fetus or it may cause the fetus to be delivered earlier. This disease may be passed on from the mother to the baby during the birth. The baby can become blind if the bacteria enter his or her eyes. Syphilis Like gonorrhea, syphilis is also caused by a type of bacteria. It can cause the death of a fetus and also it affects the placenta and the umbilical cord. So, it will be affected to the growth of the fetus. The fetus may also be delivered earlier. This disease may be passed from the mother to the fetus during pregnancy. So, the babies born with the syphilis usually have problems with their spleen and liver. So my dear children, I hope you could learn and understand more things about the both male and female reproductive system and the menstruation circle, the fertilization process and the fetal development through this lesson. Thank you very much for joining. Have a nice day to all of you.